Off the coast of Yemen lies an old, decrepit oil tanker. It was once used in Yemen's Black Gold Rush and became a permanent fixture on the landscape, storing large quantities of oil for decades. When the civil war broke out, the tanker quickly fell into Hufi territory, where it was abandoned and left floating, still densely packed with oil. The tanker is quickly deteriorating, a leak may form at any moment, or a single spark can blow it up, along with all the oil contained in it, causing a massive oil spill, four times larger than the Exxon spill in Alaska, but this time it's not in a sparsely populated relatively unimportant area is on the entrance to the Red Sea, risking totally closing it off for global mild traffic. You may remember the Ever Given and its effects on global trade and supplies. It was pretty bad all around. This can be much, much worse. This is the telling tale of the FCO affair. The FCO Safer is an old, ultra-large crude carrier built for a time where the Suez had been closed off for years. It tended to transport massive quantities of oil during such a period. But it was obsolete from the start, since when it was complete, the Suez had already reopened. So its role became one as to serve as a large offshore oil storage site on the cheap and it was deployed in its capacity as a part of the start of Yemen's oil industry. It was supposed to be a quick and temporary solution, but as all temporary solutions go, it became a permanent one. There were multiple efforts by the Yemenite government to replace it, but they all fell through, and as affair continued to serve its roles long past its due date. When the civil war broke out, it was captured by Houthi rebels who have maintained control over it to this very day, all the while cutting it off from critical maintenance, making its condition much worse. The FCO's affair still has a massive amount of oil stored in it from its days as an oil storage facility. Over 1.1 million barrels of oil, valued at around $80 million. And now it has become a ticking time bomb. It continues to break apart without any maintenance. And any minute, a leak or a single spark may go off and set off all the oil contained in it to the surface of the Red Sea. This is a massive danger to Yemen itself and the entire global interconnected economy and trade network. If the clock were to go off and an oil spill occurs, it will quickly expand, and in a matter of weeks, it could block off the entrance to the Red Sea to maritime traffic. In the first week, Yemen will be quickly blocked off from this traffic, unable to receive any ships at its ports, many of which carry with them vital food and humanitarian aid. This will result in mass starvation across Yemen, as it's unable to receive international aid through shipping causing a food crisis which will sadly claim the lives of tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people across Yemen. An oil spill in the Red Sea will also disable the desalination plants active on its shoreline. It may even reach, depending on the weather, the massive desalination plants of Saudi Arabia, endangering millions in the kingdom as well. Even a small spill will disable the capability of Yemen to desalinate water, creating a massive water shortages in the already water-scarce country. The oil spill will result in an environmental catastrophe in the unique marine ecosystem which is present near the entrance to the Red Sea, filled with coral reefs and many endemic species of fish, resulting in the collapse of the local fishing industry in Yemen, which sustains over 1.7 million people, along with the tourism industry across the Red Sea, which is built off the back of its unique marine ecosystem, but will take literal decades to recover. Yemen won't be the only one to suffer. It will be the most affected, but a blockage of the Red Sea, and as a result, the Suez Canal will cause a worldwide disruption in trade on a scale 
far above the ever given blockage. It's important to note that 12% of global shipping traffic passes through the Suez Canal via the Red Sea. Then the Suez was blocked off by the ever given for just a single week. For the total cost of the incident was calculated to be $50 billion just for a single week. An oil spill from the SCL Safer may block the Red Sea for months, resulting in it costing the world economy hundreds of billions of dollars in disruptions of global trade. This will further drive up the cost of basic necessities such as food and oil, which are already at sky high prices since the start of the Russia Ukraine war. This will make things worse for many struggling nations, burdening them with further hardship and crises. A large scale oil spill in the Red Sea will take months to clean up. The cleanup effort itself is estimated at $20 billion. The world will collectively lose hundreds of billions of dollars, but the value of the cargo itself is just $80 million. It seems insane that this ticking time bomb persists. The world could quite literally solve the $100 billion problem for chump change, pay off the hoofies and carry out the oil on the ship and transfer it into a safe location. This project is estimated to cost $140 million. $140 million to save hundreds of billions further down the line. As such, the question that immediately follows is why haven't we solved this problem yet? And this is where the political reality forces itself into the conversation. As stated previously, the FCO Safer lies in the territory of the Houthis, granting them a golden suicide vest rigged with a ticking time clock. An $80 million time bomb, which can go off at any moment. This vest grants the Houthis leverage in the war against the Saudi backed coalition fighting them. The Houthis may pull on the vest at any moment, blowing themselves up and dragging the entire global economy along for the ride. The situation only gets worse considering that the leader of the coalition, Saudi Arabia, lies directly on the path of the oil spill, endangering the coastal cities which lie close to Yemen's shores. The Houthis are basically holding the Saudis and the world economy for hostage, trying to extract as many concessions as possible from the international community before allowing them to clean up the mess. But the clock waits for no one and keeps on ticking. If the Houthis delay for too long, the leak may just happen and everybody, including the Houthis themselves, lose. The Houthis won't be receive the money or be granted their demands and the UN will have to pay a steep $20 billion price for the cleanup. Of course, the global economy will also suffer extensively with hundreds of billions of dollars in damages. As such, this becomes a careful balancing act for the Houthis. Way too little and the leak happens, and the fighting position significantly wanes. Way too little, and they lose out on lucrative opportunities presented to them by the situation. Despite this typical political reality, a cleanup effort has been organized by the UN. The cleanup effort has two phases. The first phase, and the most crucial one, is to eliminate the possibility of a leak or an explosion from the FCO's film. By dealing with the trapped gases on the tanker and transferring the oil away into a safe holding facility. The second phase is to replace the FCO software completely with a new safe oil storage facility for the Houthis. As of the time of recording, the first phase is fully funded, but the UN is still looking for national and private donors to fund the second phase of the project. Still, it's set out to start this year. But take that with a large pinch of salt, since it's already two years behind schedule. Overall, the Houthis emerge as the true victors of his current effort. Despite being the ones largely responsible for the crisis, they are rewarded, like the UN cleaning up a mess, 
a new old storage facility at the US own expense and likely large portions of the proceeds from the oil stored in the Safer and its wharf in its scrap metal. This is because the operation is entirely at the Hofi's behest, and the awards mentioned above are basically bribes meant to keep them happy and agreeable to the cleanup. And yet the Hofi's may stop the operation at any moment and demand for even more, and the UN will have to comply or else, because that's a free occurrence, this will all waste precious time and as such increase the risk of the clock ticking for the final time and the Safir going boom. The Hufis have shot themselves in with a golden suicide vest. Let's hope that they don't delay to the point where it goes off by itself.